Thank you and good afternoon to everyone also from my side and welcome to this session. I think uh, that the topic of this session is quite challenging since, since uh, it aims uh, to uh, join consideration and discussion about uh, uh, the sustainability choice of clubs and organization and how uh, this kind of choice should be or could be balanced uh, with the economic and commercial revenues. Uh, okay, uh, as we know, the green choice and sustainability are more and more important in building stadium or also in management decision. So I think that uh, we have the right panel today and the right speaker to discuss uh, about uh, about this uh, this issue so i don't want uh, to take uh, more time to our to the to our speaker and i would like uh, to start uh, uh, from you justin uh, you are from usl we know that uh, you are a process of developing soccer stadium in the united states a very big uh, process so uh, can you describe your experience in this process regarding the balance uh, between uh, commercial economic uh, aspects and sustainability. So how you are approaching this topic? Good morning and, and thank you for having me uh, here today. This is a really uh, important topic and one that's uh, very relevant uh, to the USL and that we spend a lot of time thinking about uh, because we're in a unique position, I think, uh, among leagues across the world uh, for two reasons. First, is that we are going to be building uh, 35 plus stadiums over the next uh, five, five, six years. And second, because uh, the league is taking a very proactive role in structuring uh, many uh, of our stadium deals across the country uh, for our expansion markets in particular. So we have uh, kind of a three pillar strategy in looking at um, our environmentally sustainable stadiums. The first is the location of the stadium. And what we wanna do here is take a very broad look at the entire fan journey. Um, and, and so we made a very conscious decision, uh, unlike some of our peers in, in minor league baseball and in American football, uh, to, to focus on downtown stadiums. And that's important because we need, by engaging the urban core, we are able to leverage uh, the existing infrastructure, the streets, the bars, the restaurant, et cetera, uh, but principally also uh, that we can really promote the pedestrian uh, from smart streets to ride sharing, scooters, bicycle mm -hmm. parking, uh, and, and principally public transportation. Uh, it's very important that we look at the entire fan journey to the game and reduce our environmental footprint uh, across that, that entire fan journey. The second area that we look at um, is focusing our stadium design uh, to incorporate multiple purposes. Um, so we look at, instead of building multiple venues uh, for, for serving different purposes, how can we design the stadium uh, for flexibility, uh, to incorporate uh, events on a, on a daily basis, uh, from, from concerts uh, to, to, to other sports. In our, in our last area, uh, kind of pillar that we look at, um, are sustainable strategies in the construction of the stadium. Um, so looking at sustainable materials uh, from, from the lighting uh, to uh, modular construction versus brick and mortar. Um, and then also, I think, really looking at the uh, space within the stadium. And a good example is premium seating. So I think historically, uh, at least in the United States, uh, there was a, uh, in, in the suites, for example, the corporate suites, uh, there was a you know, focus on you know, small indoor suites uh, that would you know, accommodate 10, 10, uh, 10 or so individuals. What we're looking at now uh, is to reduce the environmental impact, having open air suites. And I think that uh, what, what we're seeing is that in, in this specific area, the, the corporate customer, um, they wanna be closer to the field. They like the open air uh, environment. And because they're more, uh, the, they're more connected to the match, 
and they can reduce uh, their, their environmental impact. So those are the three areas that, that, that uh, we, we look at in developing our stadium strategy. Okay, thank you, Justin. You mentioned very important issue like uh, carbon footprint, for example, coming from mobility and, from, and so uh, strictly connected with your first pillar like location. And we know how carbon footprint and take into account also that some last action from UEFA, for example, on this topic, we know how this uh, topic is more and more important in football. Uh, so uh, passing from building and construction on stadium on uh, management decision that can in somehow associate uh, with the uh, green action. Uh, Ramon, you are a member of the uh, board of Real Betis uh, football club in Spain that uh, is adopting a strong uh, environmental action. So uh, my question for you is, uh, could you help us and our audience to better understand uh, which are the drivers, which are the reason why a football club of Spanish Liga like you decide uh, to adopt a green action? And if these drivers are in somehow connected with the topic of our, of our panel, so economic aspect and commercial aspect, because if I think to manufacturing companies, okay, the, the economic saving, for example, for uh, energy action is a good driver. Is the same in football? So the economic aspects are, are a good driver for green choices, or there are also other drivers in a context like uh, a professional football club? Uh, okay, uh, when Real Betis, we started to try to introduce our, our brand and our club in this, say, in the policies related to environmental issues, at the beginning, the, you know, my, my mates from the board, they look at, the, at this as an investment or as an expense, you know, as a cost. Why we have to, to change the way we, we invest, the way we are going to build the new academy center, the way we are going to do the things, eliminating the, 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 the wasting system, eliminating all the plastic, and because we are not going to have anything back. You know? Only the, but they thought, okay, we have the responsibility, because you know, soccer is the, or football is the most important competition in the world, the most important sport followed in, in, in the world with more than 4 billion people uh, supporting us. But now the, they are realizing that uh, my idea, that this uh, is, uh, is very important for a club, not only because we, we should do something because the climate crisis is quite important, is one of the most challenging issues that we have to face in the, in the future, but also for, for a brand like a Real Betis, uh, now uh, if you link your, your brand with the, with the, as a green team and you, you link your brand in the, in the in values, in the climate values, I think it, it gives you uh, something at value that when you want to put your brand in the market to, to, to get more money from your sponsor and to get more engagement from your fans. So at the end of the day, I think in the future, uh, in a commercial world that uh, everything is fighting for to win the market, uh, to be distinguished and to link yourself or your brand with, uh, uh, with values so important as the climate uh, values, for me, is very important. So the money we are investing in doing the, in doing the things in, the, in a better way, uh, I think we're going to get this money back for sure in the, in the next future. So it's a way to invest, to, to do the things in, the, in a better way, to, to help your, your kids to have a better world in the future, but also you are going to get money back because I think brands and people and fans, now they are paying attention to values. And it's going to be great. Uh, it's a great strategy for us. Okay, okay. Thank you, Ramon. Uh, your, your answer helped me to introduce the next topic that I would like uh, to discuss uh, with Marcel. Okay, speaking about uh, commercial revenues, uh, since this aspect is included in our topic, we cannot uh, discuss uh, about uh, uh, supporters' engagement. Supporters uh, through tickets, uh, through merchandising, is a good source of uh, uh, economic revenue for a club. And Marcel, taking into account uh, uh, you are in a country, Germany, in Freiburg, uh, that uh, is famous in Europe uh, for the environmental awareness of their population and so probably 
the environmental awareness of, uh, of the su football supporters. I would like uh, to ask you, how is the feedback from uh, the fans? So if uh, uh, to your green choice uh, in your stadium and how you, if you are using also uh, this action uh, for supported engagements take and take into account uh, uh, you are in process to develop the new stadium in Freiburg. You are the leader of this project. So can you describe uh, this aspect uh, connected uh, with and focused with supporters engagement? Sure thing. Thank you, Tiberio. And I'd like to build on what, what Ramon said uh, in terms of, 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 of brand. Um, for us, especially Freiburg is, is uh, well, deems itself a green city. It's the first big city in, in Germany that had a green mayor. Um, we are also uh, at SC Freiburg, basically uh, at the forefront of, of, uh, of environmental issues. 20 years ago, we, we introduced solar panels on our roof as one of the first stadiums in Germany. Um, so we basically have the, the, eco uh, the, the ecological uh, aspects of part of our DNA. And uh, hence, our citizens and our fans are expecting from us to be environmentally conscious. Um, we don't have an, we don't have a choice actually, and we don't want to to uh, to make different to make other decisions than being environmentally conscious and taking uh, taking these actions. Um, so uh, we probably we could not let's say for instance have uh, cups that can't be reused. So we use reusable cups at the stadium. Um, we, there would not be an option to not have a significant number of uh, uh, car, uh, bike parking at the new at the new stadium. We have a, like a number of like ten percent uh, of the full stadium capacity uh, being reserved for uh, for bicycle parking. Um, we also add um, the, the the public transport ticket is is, is part of our of the, of the ticket price uh, of every ticket. So everybody who buys a ticket also gets a, a public transport ticket basically included within the price. So these are like all those minor things that add together to uh, <clears throat> what we call, uh, or what, what is our um, environmental uh, uh, environmental aspect of, of the stadium. We're also having uh, set up a cooperation with WWF. I'm not sure how familiar you guys are with, with the WWF, but uh, we're linked with them together and build, set up a, um, <clears throat> the cooperation with them to build a, um, a wildlife pass in, in the Black Forest, which we also introduce and use for uh, for a uh, for a brand building of of, of being an environmentally conscious conscious club. And obviously, we're also looking into all aspects of digitalization, which also help to to reduce carbon footprint. For instance, in ticketing, we, we're entering mobile tickets, which will reduce the, the amount of, 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 uh, of paper tickets, um, uh, which is also like an aspect of, of, um, of those uh, sustainable activities. Um, in addition, we're also looking into more vegan uh, choices at, uh, at the um, the catering concession stands. We haven't fully yet uh, uh, have, a, have a full vegan concept, for instance, as, as other clubs have in, in England, for instance. Um, but we're looking into that, and we're also looking into other aspects of waste, um, waste separation, and, and and all that stuff. Um, and these are these are the things on operative side, and we also have the building of the new stadium, like put in a lot of of, of, of thought into. Um, environment and environmental aspects such as we, we, we will uh, get our um, the heat is, is basically waste heat that we receive from a, from a, from a nearby plant so our, our um, the heating system of the stadium is completely CO, like carbon neutral um, added by like the, the, the big solar panels on the roof um, added by the location I think we had this what Justin said that, that trying to bring the, the location close to the people that they don't have to take long roads at, at a long distance to travel to the stadium. Um, the, these are all the things that we put into consideration while, while designing the new stadium and they all add together to, uh, to, to, our, to our DNA um, and it will also be uh, well, <clears throat> part um, of, of, of the new history that we're trying to write here at the, with the new stadium.
Okay, thank you, Marcel. You mentioned uh, ticket uh, mobility or vegan choice. For example, for vegan choice, there are some football club uh, that uh, uh, already adopt this kind of practice. And uh, uh, but uh, speaking with other football clubs, I see that uh, are in some amounts care by the fact that the supporters are not fully engaged in this choice. So. Uh, regarding these two initiatives, ticket mobility, did you have uh, success in terms of uh, uh, change uh, behavior in terms of mobility or the vegan choice? Did you get some uh, claims uh, from the supporters? So, so how, how is the situation of this two practice uh, with, with the supporters? If yeah. you have... Given uh, well, the, the, the ticket process, we will only start at the new stadium, but we've developed the whole system. Ah, okay. That we, that we can use it but we've seen like in Germany a lot of uh, uh, let's say shift to mobile tickets in, in other aspects so we believe that uh, this will be pretty successful <clears throat> um, but it's also conscious choice with those terms um, with respect to the vegan choices uh, you mentioned it correctly uh, people are struggling to 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 change their behavior we had at the old stadium we do have like some some um, vegan special uh, concession stands who only offer vegan like tofu and, and, and all that stuff. They were not, let's say, extremely successful compared to the other uh, um, concession stands where we have like the standard, uh, the standard choices. Uh, but we believe that like over the last couple of years, things have changed in, 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 in Germany, uh, especially like uh, Fridays for Future and all those uh, activities, they've, like, they've significantly changed. And I'm not saying that we're going like completely vegan for the next, uh, if, uh, for, for entering into the new stadium, but we will look very closely into the developments in those areas. And we will really like, let's say, uh, make like uh, uh, tests and, and, and try things out because we believe this is like in the long term, um, we we want to reduce our carbon footprint also in, in, in that and then like as soon as like those things adopt we need to be on top of those things as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, Borka from uh, Athletic Bilbao, thank you to be here also to you. Uh, so we have spoken about uh, uh, commercial economic aspects and funds engagement. What about uh, the other stakeholders that uh, let's say are in contact uh, with a football club uh, with you and the other stakeholders that are like funds are important in terms of uh, uh, economic and commercial revenues. I'm thinking to sponsor, I'm thinking to media. Do you receive some uh, pressure or on the contrary, you have in somehow to stimulate them according to your green choice? So which is the relation on this topic with them? Well, thank you, Tiberio. Um, first of all, um, if I want you to, to understand whatever that has to, to do with our club. In the first uh, thing I need to just mention is who we are, uh, what is Athletic Club, because it's important that we were established in 1998 and we are one of the founding members of La Liga. We have never been relegated to second division and members have always owned the club. That's important. But the most important thing perhaps is that all these years we have uh, is the fact of being um, competing for more than 100 years just with uh, Basque players. Um, this fact uh, has turned the club uh, as a potent symbol of, of values, of pride, of identity, and that is because of philosophy and, and the way of uh, understanding the, the football. So we can say that we have another way of competing. We're maintaining a philosophy uh, and way of doing things is uh, important. And winning is not everything. We, we like to compete, but we love winning, but for us, the way of doing it is important. And that's the same in all areas of the club. Uh, the way of uh, doing things is important for us. And that's why, among other things, uh, sustainability is an important value in terms of social responsibility, but also when it comes to connecting with our fans and um, making them feel identified with the behavior of the of their club. Uh, you have said, uh, in my opinion, there are two kinds of projects related to sustainability in, in terms of uh, environmental sustainability, um, those that have to do with planning stadium projects and those that have to do with management decisions and operations. In our case, in, in terms of uh, stadium project planning, uh, San Mames Stadium was the first football stadium in Europe. Um, giving lead uh, certification, leadership uh, in energy and environmental design certification, the most internationally renowned 
one in, in this field. Uh, it assess the level of sustainability of buildings based on, on, on the categories of operation um, in, in the landscape or energy and water saving, the, the use of the um, Covered materials with low environmental impact, innovation, and, and design also. Um, and in terms of management and operation, we have tried to involve uh, stakeholders in the in the project, both uh, institutional mm -hmm. and sponsors also. Uh, talking about institutional, I can mention uh, two significant uh, projects. Other way, the first one is the implementation of uh, Ronca Garbia methodology, that is clean challenge methodology designed to minimize the, the negative environmental impacts in large scale events. And thanks to this uh, methodology, the club has received the sustainable event certification for matches, and that's uh, uh, so pioneer in this field. And the other project uh, with the institutions uh, has to do with recycling. We have signed an agreement for the implementation of environmental measures to a public company in order to increase the recycling rate of waste in our territory, in, in Vizcaya. And the agreement um, established two, two, uh, two primary objectives. Uh, firstly, the, the, the club is committed to optimizing the, the collection and, and removal of, of waste generated in the stadium in some moments. And secondly, the um, environmental awareness campaign. This campaign aims to raise the awareness of the importance of recycling and the appropriate treatment of uh, management also of the waste to the strength, to the strength of, of, of Athletic Club uh, Bram, um, also to the Athletic Club uh, fans and, and by extension to, to all the population and visitors of the territory of Vizcaya. Uh, I want okay. also to, to explain two examples concerning two projects with sponsors. The, the, the first one, um, is with BMW that we have reached an agreement to use electric cars for our staff and make our mobility uh, more sustainable. We are using just 100% electric cars and vans since last year. And uh, I think the, the most important or the main project in, in this area with, uh, with the sponsor is with uh, Petronor, that is an energy company. And we share with them the commitment uh, regarding okay sustainable uh, development uh, the agreement okay, says okay 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 thank you our session uh, is going to, to okay, close sure. in uh, in one minute thank you very much a really interesting uh, initiative so how to wrap up uh, this session i would say that uh, uh, this session confirms uh, that uh, environmental sustainability is uh, more and more important in the frame of stadium development as well as uh, stakeholder engagement like funds. So Marcel had to discuss about funds, uh, Borca had to discuss about uh, uh, other, other kind of stakeholder. And uh, Ramon has highlighted how it's important uh, to believe in some choice that a club uh, uh, does uh, independently by the economic and commercial aspect. While Justin, okay, has uh, described a very innovative process of construction of certified stadium. So I would say that uh, uh, sustainability is going to be more and more uh, variable in the frame of the management uh, and in the decision <laughs> of uh, football club and, and the organization. And so uh, probably also in the future, this topic of uh, balance between economic and commercial aspect uh, uh, will be again uh, on the table of football clubs and uh, football organizations, taking into account uh, the strong and innovative initiative that we have uh, here here today. So, if I'm not wrong, I would like uh, I we, we have uh, ended our time. I would like uh, to thank you all, firstly our speaker and all the audience uh, naturally, and uh, surprise uh, to guests uh, to host uh, this kind uh, this this session. Thank you.